Welcome everyone and uh, welcome to another one of our investment uh, manager videos. Many thanks once again for tuning in. ESG, it's everywhere with new funds launching on a seemingly daily basis to capture this slew of cash that wants both to deliver excess returns, but in a way that benefits society. But is the standard approach to ESG investing simply wrong? Welcome to Controversy Corner, and who better to offer a view on this subject than, in my eyes, one of the most notable investors in the UK today, James Clooney. Long short manager, academic, and the author of the CFA Level 3 text on stewardship. So the guy knows his stuff. But first, before we get into content, it would be wonderful if you could subscribe by hitting the button somewhere below. Um, it really does help us in projecting our content um, on both financial planning and investment management topics. So, onto the content. James, many thanks once again for coming onto the channel. Um, okay. getting, getting straight into it, you think that buying shares in firms with the best ESG credentials is not the right way to invest. Why is that? It's, it's not the right way to invest in theory, and actually it, it shouldn't be the right way in practice either. Uh, most of the evidence, when you look at it, suggests that it's not the level of esg that matters to your future returns, it's changes in ESG. If you think about it, if a firm has superior ESG to another firm, it should be known and it should get priced in the market so that your returns stabilize going forward. So it shouldn't be a perpetual outperformance from high SG stocks. It should get priced in the market and things should end up as a wash. What does matter though is a change either in the fundamentals of the firm or in the regulations or tax or perception of ESG that creates a jump. And it's there where you can actually outperform add value as an investor. Mm -hmm. So we're perhaps nowadays too focused on good ESG v bad ESG and mm -hmm. not enough focused on what are the likely changes going to be. Right. So if, say, for instance, BP and other oil majors are um, focused upon reducing their carbon emissions, does this mean we should buy their shares? If, if everything else was equal, then, and that was the only thing that changed, then yes, you would. In other words, if a company that's perceived as low ESG, at least in terms of the environmental part of ESG, mm -hmm. improves that and everything else stays the same, then actually that's good news at the margin. But the trouble is, if a company like BP is decarbonizing, that probably means less oil and gas. And that's probably where its skill set lies. It's got skilled engineers who can find oil and drill oil. And so if it's doing less of what it's good at, that might actually hurt the firm in some other way. So it's a trade-off between superior environmental credentials and maybe losing your competitive advantage. And that's a difficult way up. So in, in that case, because you've got two things going on at once, it's, it's not for sure. Right. Just one way out the other. Is that one way to focus upon, is, you know, is, is, is the A, the S or the G the most important part? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think there's probably a little bit too much focus on the E and not enough on the S and the G. The, the G is actually something that's really interesting because you can try and analyze it. You can look at related party transactions, who's on the board, uh, you know, interrelations there, what kind of code conduct they, you know, they follow, what the regulatory infractions have been in the past. So you can definitely analyze that. Yeah. The S is harder and, and uh, you know, like the societal impact. And I think of the social media stocks you know, on the one hand, they say we're connecting the world and providing a free service to people. On the other hand, your data is being ruthlessly exploited, sometimes recklessly given away. Sometimes they put violent content and allow it to stay on their, their, their platform because it drives engagement and users and, and therefore revenue. So it's like, well, actually, you know, there's, there's different things there and the firm will give one story and you'll maybe see another angle and they, they trade off against each other. So the societal part, the S is harder uh, but, but the sort of governance is, is, is definitely analyzable quite easily. Mm -hmm. The E has had all the focus, I think, for the yeah. last few years. And actually, they, they, they are all a balance. And you can wrap it all up in stewardship, how they basically look at externalities and risk and, and, and society and their own conduct uh, and, and, and get a broad overview of whether it's a good firm uh, mm -hmm. or a bad firm. But more importantly, whether it's improving or deteriorating, that's what's really going to drive the, yeah. the, the, the surprise moves in the share price. Mm -hmm. Now, um, 
you know, talking about surprise moves and share prices, you are a short seller, a notable short seller. In the past, you targeted firms with poor governance, uh, negative societal impacts and aggressive tax planning. Um, has it worked? It's not been easy at all. I mean, you'd, you'd think that sort of finding companies that, uh, you know, where, uh, where the, the director incentives are perverse, that have lots of related party transactions, that break the law, that, that get sort of, you know, a product recalls, right? You'd think these are bad firms that actually should, should sink, but quite often these are clever firms and they, they sort of say, hey, look over there. While you're trying to focus over here, they say, look, here's a great story. We've got revenue growth here, or we've got a new product there, or we're pivoting to Bitcoin now, as opposed to whatever it was we were doing before. And suddenly you're confused or, or you know, the investor universe is confused as to what's really important. So it's actually been quite challenging to short sell bad companies in terms of E, S, and G. So it's definitely no panacea to mm. say, actually, I can spot a good firm and a bad firm and I can go long one and short the other, or I can look for changes and go long one. It, it's not that linear. It's actually been quite difficult because the system is gamed in a sense. The firms know that this is what people are looking at and they create stories and narratives to drive your attention to where they want you to think and look yeah. rather than to where the action probably really is. Yeah. So, so to, 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 to round it all up, um, bearing in mind everything you've spoken about with regards to the um, less of the importance of the absolute ESG-ness and more about incrementally increasing that, what should investors be thinking about? What, what questions should, be, should they be asking? I think it's always useful to, to think about what's going to happen next and what could surprise. So rather than say, hey, this wind farm company, it's into green energy and that's a good thing. You have to think, well, will there be changes on regulation or subsidies or will, you know, nuclear power make a comeback in some countries or, you, you know, and, and, and or think about the competitive environment. Are there too many suppliers or will there be a change in the supply chain? That I think is, is, is what you should look at. The, the unanticipated by the majority sort of change rather than just to say, I just like, you know, this kind of, you know, yeah. uh, battery maker or wind turbine maker, just get a little bit, bit, bit more nuanced, I think. That would yeah. be my best advice. Fantastic. Um, food for thought. Again, it's it's a topic that is on everyone's lips, but you've, 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 you've dropped some um, some truth bombs in there. And we all like a good truth bomb here on, uh, on, on YouTube. So, James, thank you very much for your time. Can't wait till we meet up again. So you take care and uh, see you soon. Love it. Thank you.